Welcome to Music Alive North Shore, your in-home live concert cable TV show. My name's Paul Norman, and I'm your host tonight. For those of you who haven't seen the show before, our goal is to bring to you some of the North Shore's finest musicians right into your home for enjoyment. We're lucky to be with John Tamilio of 3D. You may recognize John and his great guitar playing and singing from his presence on some of Boston's premier stages. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the songs of John Tamilio of 3D. Thank you for coming. This first one I'm going to do is a song um, that I did several times throughout the pandemic. Facebook Live. It's an old 3D song called Without You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that first song as much as I did. One of the goals that I have for the Music Alive North Shore show is not only to bring you live in-home performances, but also to give you a chance to get to know the performers in the North Shore a little bit, what their influences are, uh, a little bit about them. And um, so I've asked John to come back uh, after we recorded the performance last week, sit down with me in the director's chairs and uh, talk a little bit about uh, his, the influences and some of the things he's been dealing with during the pandemic. Welcome, John. Thank you. It's good to be here again. It's great to have you here in your hometown in Beverly, Massachusetts. Absolutely. So, John, tell us a little bit about the song that we're going to hear next, Power to Write. I'm a big Beatles fan, and I'm a big John Lennon fan, and 
Eight years after John Lennon was assassinated, a book came out that was very controversial and somewhat scandalous. And I remember at the time thinking to myself that, you know, John Lennon's not here to defend himself, mm -hmm. right? He can't give his side of, of the story. And the book was written by uh, Albert Goldman. And I remember, you know, not only thinking that, but really started to think about the power of words and the power of language. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, not just that old adage that the pen is mightier than the sword, which I think it is, but how words can change perception and they can change history, yes. right? And so I wrote that song as sort of an homage to how powerful language can be, you know, but it really originated as a sort of tribute to, to the influence John Lennon had on me. Perfect. Well, let's sit back and enjoy Power to Write. One, two, one, two. Star, I can make you a bum. I can make you anything I want. My patent pen or a gun. Line my walls with fortune. Line my name with fame. I can do and say whatever I please. You're a pawn in my game. I represent a mark receipt. Power to write. I can also be Lucifer, change your life overnight. Sometimes I wait until you're dead. You cannot defend. You may get me while you're alive. I'll get you in the end. Just give me the power to write. You'll see what I can do. Words sometimes get harder than fists I'll use mine to beat you Just give me the power to write You'll see what I can do Words sometimes cut sharper than knives I'll use mine to rape you I can be a thief in the night If you give me the power to write December 8th, 1980 In the dark of the New York cold Mark David Chapman gunned down John Lennon And the story was told Eight years later, no one was satisfied People won't let it end Mark David Chapman gunned down John Lennon Albert Goldman killed him again Just give me the power to write See what I can do Words sometimes hit harder than fists I'll use mine to beat you Just give me the power to write You'll see what I can do Words sometimes get sharper than knives I'll use mine to rape you I can be a thief in the night If you give me the power to write star on any TV any movie screen or radio from sea to shining sea every star knows his fate he can burn out overnight I can bury you so far under you'll never see the light just give me the power to You'll see what I can do Words sometimes hit harder than fists 
Thank you. Thank you so much. We're back on the set with John Tomilio, and we're getting ready to entertain you with his next composition. It's called Change. And this is a time that we're all seeing change in our lives, hopefully for the better. As we just talked about, uh, the lockdown created uh, Facebook Live performances. And now the real change that you're going to see is John's going to be joined by a couple of his music colleagues. Uh, John, tell us who's going to join us uh, for this next song, Change. Uh, for this song and the rest of them, you're going to hear um, and see both uh, John Shulman and Phil Knight. John is on bass, Phil is on keyboards, and they're two very dear friends of mine. They um, have been playing for a few years now with 3D as sort of side musicians. Uh -huh. um, but I don't want to refer to them that way because they're very much an integral part of what we do on stage. There, you know, there's a musicality um, that exists in, in between musicians. Mm -hmm. And, and it, when you can find that and, and latch on to it, it's quite effective. And, and I certainly have that with both of these uh, men. And they're, they're, they're fine craftsmen at what they do. Uh, what you're going to hear in this song is John is going to take the lead on bass. Right, because without a rhythm guitar player, it would sound kind of thin if I took the lead on guitar. Sure. So John is doing a lot of the lead work on this and a couple other pieces as well. Great men, great musicians, uh, great friends, and we have a lot of fun together. Um, we laugh as much as we perform. Well, that's the name of the game, and I'm sure that the audience will see that come through. So let's go ahead and listen to Change. I'm 
Thank you. John Schulman on the bass. Wow, I really enjoyed that song, and uh, this is just a sense of what you guys are going to see going forward, a preview of good things to come. Um, and one of the things that I like to talk about, John, with the performers that are on Music Alive North Shore is to understand a little bit about uh, their musical history, how, mm. what uh, path they took to get here, um, you know, not sure whether you started in fourth grade with the guitar or another instrument, singing. Tell us a little bit about uh, your musical background and uh, what brought you here today. I, I come from a musical family. Uh, I have two brothers and a sister. Um, my brothers are both musicians, mm -hmm. um, or at least they were. Um, my sister was married to a musician, Gary Shane, uh, for, oh. for some time. So he's wow. a member of the family. Oh, um, fantastic. So I grew up around music, and actually my first instrument was the drums, and I played those for several years, and then my brother started playing the drums, and he was just so much better. He was a natural, so uh -huh. I thought, forget the sibling rivalry. When it comes to music, I'm going to do something different. So I picked up the guitar and have been playing ever since, you know, and it's, it's, it really has been a joy. One of my heroes of uh, the guitar is Mark Knopfler, Huh. who played for Dire Straits. Yeah, absolutely. And he, he one time said that, that the guitar is your best friend. Mm -hmm. And I think he's right. I think he's right. There's a lot that you can explore and discover as a, as a musician and as a songwriter. You know, if, if you have an instrument that you really love and you can use it to communicate thoughts and feelings that uh, you otherwise are unable to, maybe. So the instrument plays a key part, but of course it's the composition so tell us about Holding Back. I understand you wrote that with a colleague. Holding Back was written with Steve Medore okay. of the 3D family, of uh -huh. 3D fame, uh, along with a couple other songs that will be in the set tonight. Okay. And that's one of the earlier songs that we wrote together. All right, great. Well, let's hear it. This is another one of those old 3D songs I love to play. I love to play it a lot, and uh, especially with these guys. So let's do it. This is called Holding Back. Time excuses 
And you fed me the same old lines You think I'm holding back Maybe I've let go Something you think I think Is it something you think I know You say love's just a game We play in the night Sometimes it's pretty bad Sometimes it's alright Sometimes it's all Thank you so much. Thank you. So the next song we're going to hear is a question that I've asked myself a lot. Will you stay in love with me? Uh, and the important thing is, uh, John, when you wrote that song, uh, where were you in your life? What were you thinking about? What did it mean to you at that time? Well, first of all, I had hair. Okay. So that's one thing that's different. Uh-huh. <laughs> You know, it's a ballad. It's a love song yeah. that, that, that you know, um, I wrote many years ago. And I remember after writing it that I just loved this song and I loved the message and I loved the flow of it. And we had a gig. The band had a gig and we were staying in a hotel room and we had gotten there earlier uh, in the day. And literally in a hotel room, I taught them the song. I remember the drummer, our drummer at the time, Jason DiNato, playing drums on the bed. He had his drumsticks, you know, and he's playing on a hotel bed. Uh -huh. And I taught them the song, and we were able to play it that night. And, you know, it's a song that I keep returning to because this, 
there's something about the composition that I really like, the mm -hmm. flow of it. I love playing it on guitar. I love the way the chords progress. Yeah. Uh, it begins, it's in the key of G, but it's not a regular open G chord. It's an F chord formation. And then I drop down to a sort of this open, strange B minor. And um, it, it's, it's a song that really over time has taken on a different meaning for me. How so? I think it's because of how we mature mm -hmm. as individuals and how our relationships take on different meanings over time. You know, uh -huh. when you're young and you have a crush and you're in love, that means one thing. But when you're older and you're married and, you know, you're with your soulmate, it yeah. takes on a, a different meaning. So I've returned to that song many times as a song that really is about my wife, Cindy, although, of course, I didn't know her at the time that I wrote it. Sure. So I think music has that power. You know, music has that power to evolve and to transform not only listeners, but those who write them, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great.
Thank you. Thank you. So before we get into our next song called Take Me Away, I wanted to talk with John a little bit about the challenges that we've all seen in the past 20 months through the pandemic. Mm. You know, this has been a, a time, of course, where we haven't been able to get out to live venues. Um, and unfortunately, it's had a devastating e economic impact mm -hmm. on musicians that so many of them rely on their talent to put <clears throat> food on the table. And yeah. uh, fortunately, you were lucky that you don't rely on music as your primary source of income. Tell me a little bit about your day job. Um, I actually have two sort of day jobs. Okay. Uh, my main profession is that I am an ordained minister. I'm actually uh, the pastor of the Congregational Church in Canton. Oh, fantastic. And yeah, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Um, I, I, I love ministry. I love preaching. I love teaching. And I've been in Canton for a little over nine years now mm -hmm. uh, as the pastor there. It's a congregational church, which is, uh, and we're part of the National Association of Congregational Christian Churches, uh -huh. which is like a mainline denomination. You know, there's lots of congregational churches in the New England area. So uh, any of those that you see, you know, uh, First Congregational Church of whatever community, sure. uh, those are sort of sister churches within uh, if not the same denomination, uh, a sister denomination. I also teach. I teach at Salem State University. Um, I teach philosophy. Interesting. Which aligns with, you know, uh, ministry quite well because in many universities, their department of philosophy is uh, the department of philosophy and religion. Mm -hmm. So I see these as being complementary disciplines. As a philosopher, I teach mostly courses in ethics, uh -huh. um, ethical theory, as well as business ethics, um, medical ethics, environmental ethics, a whole host of courses in that field, but also other courses in philosophy, metaphysics and epistemology and all those great things. So I can see the connection between philosophy, a professor, and a minister. But now we've got a rock and roller on our hands. <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little bit about that. And I guess in some respects, uh, maybe it's not such a surprise to have um, a difference here with, or such a contrast. Um, because, you know, in some ways, do you find that your music, your lyrics uh, communicate an inspirational message to your audience similarly to what you try to do in your ministry on a day-to-day -day basis? I, I absolutely do. And maybe the, the correct response is, I hope they do. Uh -huh. And I think this next song, Take Me Away, is a prime example of that. Okay. It's not a song that is dour or depressing in any way. It's, it really is. It's not a religious song by any means, but it truly is, I think, in uplifting. Awesome. Well, let's hear it. Something 
Thank you. Thank you. So we're back on set with John. Um, and as we talked a little bit about earlier, I find it fascinating to hear uh, performers' musical influences. You talked about uh, the guitar and Mark Knopfler uh, earlier in our discussion. Um, tell me a little bit more about perhaps some performers, some guitarists, some composers sure. that uh, have influenced your music that we're hearing today. I think my earliest influence uh, as a guitar player was actually that twin guitar sound that Thin Lizzy was known for. Uh, I remember as a kid, my brother having uh, Thin Lizzy's Live and Dangerous album, mm -hmm. and I just played that album until I wore it out and you know, just loved that, that sound and what could be done with the guitar. Of course, there are other guitarists I admire and emulate, mm -hmm. uh, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix. I mean, there's a whole, well, there's a whole yeah. host of them. Sure. Um, as a writer, um, in, in, in the work of Pink Floyd has had a huge influence on me, both David Gilmour as a guitar player mm -hmm. and Roger Waters as a, as a writer. And I think that you can clearly hear this in, 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 in this song. I mean, people yeah, often say to me, Gee, that sounds like Pink Floyd. And I, you know, after I wrote it, I realized I was sort of ripping off Welcome to the Machine a little bit. <laughs> but but it, it really does have that sort of that that um, euphoric, mystical uh, almost existential aura that you associate with, with Pink Floyd's music. So, We're going to be entertained by a song that might remind you of Pink Floyd.
We got criminals in office Politicians on the streets We got children in Africa Who haven't any food to eat Before we listen to the next song all over again, we're going to take a step back into the past a little bit. And as I mentioned at the beginning of our show, that you may remember seeing John on uh, some of the stages of the iconic venues that we had in the city back in the 80s and 90s. So, John, tell us a little bit about uh, the days gone by and uh, what it was like to be a performer on the Boston uh, rock scene back in the 80s and 90s. It was an exciting time because these clubs were so alive uh-huh. and they had such a diverse array of musicians, especially if they had like a showcase night. You could have a punk band, a metal band, and a folk band all on the same bill. It was really kind of strange. But we played all of those sort of classic places. We played at the Channel, uh, the Rat, oh. Bun Ratties, the Paradise, wow. uh, and Grover's in Beverly, which is which was a favorite, you know, local hot spot that's that's no longer Grover's. Um, it was an exciting time to be playing. Radio was different then. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you could hear local bands on the radio. Oh. And you know, we would play these venues sometimes as a headliner, sometimes as an opener. 
And it was just, we were exposed, I think, to to the scene in such a way that uh, when I look back at it, I think that was it was an incredible education for us. Was our mutual, one? our musical education took place on those stages. Interesting. Was there one venue that you seemed to find that just had a was a, a great vibe every time you were there? Or? Definitely the Paradise. Oh, really? The Paradise on Commonwealth Ave was our favorite place to play. And people Absolutely. right up on front, right up on the stage, and the yeah. sound, the lights, the audience, everything about it just sort of clicked for us. And we played there a few times, sold it out a few times. It was oh, great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, let's hear the next song. This song's another blast from the past. It goes way back, and uh, we used to play this towards the end of our set every night, so it makes sense that we're doing it towards the end of the set tonight, all over again. Depression walk in The usual scene It happened before It'll happen again You said you would call me After you got over him And all frustrations are gone And I'm just another man his name does he know who I am it seems unfair but I lost I guess he's a better man do you know what I went through can you stop and feel the pain how come every time I look in your eyes it starts all over again oh yeah oh yeah all over again Oh yeah Oh yeah All over again Now, now Baby, can you tell me The saying Say I can't love someone like I Love you Love you Just so I can see you before you go away Baby, can you tell me, can you tell me Is it true that I could love somebody like I love you Oh yeah, oh yeah, all over
Thank you. Thank you. John, I really enjoyed hearing a little bit about the good old days, the 80s and the 90s, uh, where uh, the city was alive, the rock scene was unbelievable, yeah. and um, that created a lot of opportunities for you, didn't it, to be on the stage with some people that uh, you must have been amazing performers to open for. Tell us a little bit about some of the performers you shared the stage with back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned uh, earlier uh, Gary Shane, who used to, uh, who was at one time my brother-in-law. Um, so we played with him, you know, from time to time. Mm -hmm. But we opened for, or were on the bill with, various Boston bands that, you know, every, that are, that are you know, everyone knows. Mm -hmm. The Fools, for example, uh -huh. Till Tuesday, Fahrenheit. Uh, in fact, to this day, Charlie Farron remains a good friend of mine. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, he's a great guy, great musician, great guitar player and singer. Uh, these are people, you know, a lot of these people we played for. We played with The Alarm one time, which is a national act. You know? Oh, wow. So we, and we played with Till Tuesday after they had made it big as well, you know. So all these different groups that were known in the area, you know, we shared the stage with, which was a great education also to see how how they did things, you right. know, how they interact with the audience, how, you know, just everything. Um, it, it was it was a great way to sort of network. It was a great way to test out material. And it was a great way to write new material because you would hear how other people wrote songs and ah. performed them live. You yeah. know, it's, it's one thing to hear, like, you know, one of Charlie's songs, Lost in Loveland, for example. It's one thing to hear it on an album. It's another thing to see how he would do it live. And that really pushed us to be the best we could be at, you know, taking our material that we had recorded. A bit like you, for example, was on Boston Rock and Roll Anthology, volume number eight. Mm -hmm. And we returned to working with our good friend Joe Viglione uh, with Boston Rock and Roll Anthology, volume 21. Everything but pieces on that uh, album that came out a few months back. Yeah, that's a fantastic recording. If you haven't heard that... Uh you know, try to get it. A lot of great Boston music is oh, on that uh, that, that uh, recording, along with the other ones that have been done over the years. And like yeah. you said, uh, a bit like you is on number eight. We're up to number 21 now. Um, so a lot of good music there. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, having an opportunity to hear a little bit about the background, the, the side stories that um, have influenced you, made the music that uh, you've shared with us so enjoyable and um we look forward to having you back at some time in the future so john thanks so much for uh this great show thank you paul i really appreciate it thanks so much it's You're been welcome. great yeah all right this one goes back to almost the beginning uh of 3d's musical career um 1986 this appeared on boston rock and roll anthology volume number eight so here we go a bit like you. I want to know why you don't give me a glance. How do you know if I change unless you give me one more chance? Do I just give up and try to find someone new? It's true, she looks like you, looks like you. Just a bit like you
We're face to face and you turn your back and run. on the keyboards, John Shulman on the bass guitar. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.